What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. So Battlefield 2042 will probably receive its last big event and it's called Future Strike. Now I'm not really sure about this event being the last event, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be the last big event of the game because we're promised to see some more in-game events even though the game is officially cancelled, let's say, and the season 7 will be the last season. But According to DICE, we will have some in-game events and in-game rewards, but if you ask me, I'd say the last big event of the game will be the Future Strike. Now, this time-limited event will start May 28th until July 11th, and it will last two weeks, brings us a game mode called Strike Team that will literally turn Battlefield into a competitive squad versus squad game. I gotta say, I have no idea how this event is going to perform, but I'm really curious to see how will Battlefield adapt to competitive map size and competitive rules since in this game mode you only have one life per round and then you die until the start of the next round. Pretty similar to competitive games like Counter-Strike or Rainbow Six but there is something different about dying in this game mode that we'll be discussing later in the video but yeah we'll take a look at this event about the rules and what new features it brings and I'm going to tell you a little bit of my own experience with competitive shooters. If you enjoy the content make sure to leave a like and also make sure you subscribe to the channel because 95% of my viewers are actually not subscribed. So that's a bit concerning, guys. That's probably the case for a lot of you watching this video. So yeah, do make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you're watching the videos regularly. And with all that said, let's take a look at the trailer and see what we've got. So in Strike Team, you get to play in 11 maps, such as Arika Harbor, Nozhai Canals, Redacted Stadium, and so on. Obviously, we're going to see some smaller playable areas since this game mode will be 4 versus 4 or 8 versus 8 at max. And that's also the case for every other competitive game out there. You have two ways to win here, one of which is capturing the objective and the other one is eliminating all the enemy forces. Again, just like every competitive shooting game, what they mean by capturing the objective apparently is the attacking team charging these small laptops and the enemy team actually defusing them before they're captured something like that. You get the idea. It's pretty much like every other competitive game. Like in Counter-Strike or Rainbow Six, you plant some explosive, let's say. This one looks to me like some data stealing, data transfer, something like that. But the concept is just the same. Now, one of the interesting things that this game mode has in common with Rainbow Six Siege is the ability to drone. I have like 2000 hours of playtime in Siege and droning in that game was a pre-round phase. Here in Strike Team, you'll deploy as a recon drone after you die and you're able to scan the area for hostiles, probably mark them and give your squad some callouts. Now, we don't know how many drones can the squad have at the same time, but you won't be just staring at the monitor after you die. You can actually make yourself useful and help the team. And that's something creative for this dice team that we see. Kind of make use of the dead players as well. That's something interesting. We don't know anything about the rules. We don't know anything about how many drones will a team have. But one thing is for sure, and that is when you die, you can spawn again as some surveillance drones. Something like that is going on in this game mode, but we don't know exactly how many drones can you have and what those drones can actually do. It's apparently just uh, like spotting enemies, marking their positions, maybe giving your teammates some callouts, something like that. Uh, that's the kind of things you can do with a drone in a competitive game, mode, right? Now we've got a term in this event called shock rounds, which will give you round based locked loadouts. I don't know how this will work. I have no idea if it's going to be locked loadouts through the entire match or you only get these loadouts in the shock rounds. The trailer doesn't provide any further detail on this and we only have to wait and see how things will be. But looking at the name shock rounds, probably you're going to have some locked loadouts in that specific round. I don't know how these shock rounds are activated. I don't know why do they even exist, but it is what it is. And it looks like you have some pre-made loadouts and you got to play with them regardless. And looking at the trailer, there are people shooting RPGs. Probably in those shock rounds, you're going to have some weird loadouts and stuff going on. But again, the trailer does not provide any more info on this and we just have to wait and see. Also, just like every other in-game time-limited event, you can unlock some rewards. So... There's a Rao outfit called United Stand, a vehicle skin called Talon Type 1, a weapon charm called L5 Winzig, and a player card tag called Strength in Unity. This L5 weapon charm is a direct reference to Battlefield 2 and 142, which looks exactly the same 
as the L5 battle walkers in that game. In this event, which takes place in the year of 2049, the Mandate of Nations goes against the Thousand Petals Coalition. Now, here's the emblem of Mandate of Nations, and now here's the emblem of European Union and Battlefield 2142. They look pretty much the same, so why are they referring this to 2142? I believe there is no specific reason here, and they're trying to give us some sort of purpose to the event, at least story-wise. I mean, we do know that Battlefield won't be going back to that timeline, like having robots, titans all around the sky. I'm pretty sure Battlefield won't be touching that timeline anytime soon. But why are they referring this? I believe it's just making some purpose to the event and kind of connecting this to Battlefield 2142, making it a little bit, I would say, purposeful. Uh, there's like really no specific reason to this. And I do believe it's just for the player to make something out of it and somehow connect this to the events of Battlefield 2142. That's all. But speaking about competitive FPS games, and since this game mode is going to represent just that, I wanted to talk about the environment and general rules of such games. First of all, the maps are not going to be too big at all, since in these games you usually have teams of like five going against each other. The other very important thing is positioning. Now, saying you need to be learning how to position yourself just for a time-limited event for a battlefield game might be overkill, and positioning is key in every single FPS game. It doesn't have to be a competitive one, but let me tell you, if DICE was able to make an even half-cooked competitive game mode, positioning would be twice as important as it is in, let's say, Conquest. I have no idea how balanced the two sides will be because that's also very important, but the defending mechanics should be there for the defending team, and it shouldn't be a gun-and-run situation where defending or charging the objective isn't even a thing, because in every competitive game, the attacking team will have a huge benefit if they manage to arm the bomb or capture the objective, whatever you want to call that. The defending team, however, are playing with an advantage from the get-go because if they defend well, they don't even need to kill everyone. They can catch the attackers off guard. They have much more time to choose the right angles. And all in all, these are things that need paying attention to in a competitive game mode or a competitive shooting game. Also, I'm not sure if they've gone that far to change some in-game stats for suppressors, but they do matter in a game mode like this, since if you know where the enemy is, you've got half the way. And I believe the visibility distance for light suppressors should be decreased. Right now, light suppressors have a 30 meter visibility range. I believe that should be decreased to something like 15 meters for this specific event. Like, that's something that makes sense, since the area would obviously be smaller. Listening to sounds and giving callouts are also vital in a competitive environment like this, because as I said, if you know where the enemy is, you're halfway there for victory. I've just gone through some basic competitive shooting game stuff, because it's not like Battlefield turning completely into a competitive game, and we just don't need to make things so complicated to a Rainbow Six Siege level. But I just tried to let you in on some of my experience with those competitive games and talk about how they actually work for those of you who were not familiar with these genre. I believe it's going to be an interesting experience with Battlefield. I don't remember having a game mode like this before, where you only live once per round and some competitive circumstances being applied to a Battlefield game. So I'm really looking forward to this. I hope this one turns out to be a decent game mode so we can say goodbye to Battlefield 2042 and its final major event with happy faces. After all the ups and downs for this community, I guess we all deserve something like that. At least we can get a decent goodbye party for Battlefield 2042, since the game itself wasn't really satisfying, to say the least. So, with all that said, this video is coming to an end. Thank you all guys for watching, and until next time, stay cool.